Hello everyone, I'm Alana Ochar, Alana Zod, where today we are going to talk about Callisto Protocol. Uh, I played this game when it came out and finished it, I think, just around Christmas. And it was certainly not what I was hoping it would be, which is a Dead Space clone, effectively. I feel like that's what most people expected, especially being that some of the team had worked on Dead Space. And I do want to say nothing but love to that team, um, who effectively got laid off from Visceral and then watched EA remake Dead Space anyway, and obviously the Callisto Protocol was made uh, with a much smaller team and a much smaller budget than would have been the case if they were still at EA. That whole situation really sucked. But it was not what I was excited for. I ended up thinking it was kind of okay. I had an okay time. I finished the game um, in a way that I think I played it a bit more like it felt like a sort of Gears of War than it did like a Dead Space. But I'm not here to talk about uh, any of the things that I disliked about it across the board. What I wanted to talk about, and I was waiting until the Dead Space remake came out to do this so that I could like properly reflect on it, is why this game isn't scary. It's a really interesting one because it certainly has a lot of the correct DNA of something that should be scary. Um, starting with some of the best faces and best facial capture I've seen in any video game. This game graphically is so incredibly impressive. Uh, the lighting, the shadows, the sound design are all things that you would think should be scary. So it's extra surprising that it just doesn't work. There are moments where the music swells and things are tense, and yet I never had a fear in the world. So I just kind of wanted to talk about, for example, something like this. <laughs> Why? It didn't scare me. The combat is certainly the biggest proponent of that, I think, but I think there are also um, some extra facets to it that I wanted to get into. First, because it's a really easy one to get through and because we just saw it, is jump scares. This game relies on jump scares and often the exact same jump scare. Um, and in a way that even that is disappointing. I feel like the most effective jump scares are there to alleviate tension. So tension really has to ramp. I felt no tension in that scene that we had just watched in the jail cell. It was, he was clearly he was sort of drugged, there was something wrong with his vision, very small space, quite dark, um, but there was no tension. And I think that that is consistent across pretty much the entire game. If there is no tension, there's no payoff for a jump scare, there's no ending for the tension, so the jump scares don't really work. Plus, most of the jump scares in this game are really just something large and loud filling the screen. In fact, all of them are. Where I tend to feel like a more effective jump scare is like if you see something in a background just standing there or you catch something out the corner of your eye that you didn't expect, um, again, in a moment of tension, with the, which this game just absolutely does not have. So the second thing that I think uh, prevents it from being scary is the level design. And that's pretty obvious from the jump right here. Um, we're walking down a hallway. And that is effectively the level design in the entirety of Callisto Protocol, with an absent of two parts that um, I actually loved both of those parts. There's one that's sort of like an outdoor snowy area where a bunch of the enemies are frozen and you don't know if they're going to attack you or not, and some of them do, but it's very cool. The other was an underground sort of old city that, um, while it also didn't end up being very scary, was one of my favorite parts of the game in terms of actually having something to explore. But majority of the time, it is what you're seeing right now, which is a hallway that leads to another hallway that leads to another hallway. And that goes exactly in line with the story as well. I feel like it's a staple of survival horror that you are often seeing the same environments, repeated environments that you are slowly unlocking and you are tracking things in your head, right? You are getting invested in that environment by saying, there's a locked door here that I need to unlock, or there's a puzzle here that I need to find something for. So you have a personal objective that ties you to that environment, that makes you remember that environment and fear the things in the path in front of you. This game doesn't have any of that kind of thing. It is a, a constant series of walking down different or new hallways. There is occasionally a fork that will lead you to a path that has some collectibles or something, but for the most part, it is just constantly going forward and the story is perfectly in line with that which to be fair i kind of respect the story is ultimately um a person who has very few stakes uh your whole emma really is to get out of the prison and survive that's that's the whole thing you don't have anyone you're looking for you don't have anything you really care about um and it's guys like this guy for a very long time and a couple of other npcs who are basically just over comms telling you to keep moving forward i think that kind of removes your agency from exploration, which I think also removes some of the tension from that exploration. Also, uh, yeah, this game has unskippable cutscenes and no chapter select, unfortunately. So I have to start from the start, which I imagine is slightly more cutscene heavy. So with minimal stakes other than get out slash survive, um, just hallways that often look very, very, very similar, which I think is okay. Dead Space has a lot of similar looking hallways too. And 
characters in your ear just constantly telling you to keep moving, you don't feel like you really have much of a part in the story. So all it actually ends up becoming is a series of combat encounters. There is no decision making for you to hesitate on. The path forward is always very clear. It is always very obvious where you need to go and it becomes pretty obvious pretty quickly what's going to be on the other side. And I think that that works as an action game in a sci-fi setting. In fact, this does work as an action game in a sci-fi setting. There are some decisions that are kind of um, a little bit annoying, like the heal mechanic takes too long and a lot of the enemies can jump on you uh, if there are too many at once and it makes it very, very difficult. Um, this game, well, again, I did like uh, uh, things about it by the end. Uh, it does have one of my least favorite levels in probably any video game ever, which if you've played it was the tram. Um, my gosh, that took me, I don't know, hours uh, and not for my own fault. So again, we're seeing another hallway and someone has told us to go somewhere, in which case we will find more hallways. And I think part of the issue with the constant like go forward motif, which makes perfect sense. It's really clear to players where they're going and what they're doing at all times. Like it is very, very clear what you're doing. No tension in decision making. But also, our protagonist never seems to be afraid at any point. He never shows any hesitation. He doesn't even really seem to care very much about anything. He's certainly just very frustrated. But he never reacts to anything in fear, including combat, which we're just about to get into for the first time here. And the combat, again, is ultimately, in my opinion, the biggest problem with this game that, again, is otherwise beautiful and creepy looking and very well designed in a series of ways that would allude to fear, a la sound design and, um, and visuals. So, combat in this game at first i found extremely confusing and then once i figured it out i found it uh, i would say just way too easy you have to just dodge left and right and it doesn't matter what direction i i the first time i thought it was confusing because i thought that you would have to dodge in the direction you were being punched from but it's not that it's just left and then right just whatever direction you dodge the first time you have to dodge away the second time and i will say i think some of the gore stuff is actually really fun there are some very long death animations. Unfortunately, again, they uh, aren't skippable, but some of it's like very over the top and goofy and was pretty fun to watch in a kind of Mortal Kombat way, in my opinion. So here we have our first um, enemy, which what he just did, kind of scary. But when I can just do that and then that, <laughs> that's it, the whole thing. That, dodge left, dodge right, hit. He's a little easy. Dodge left. Hit. Dodge left. And I can just hold left, by the way, to dodge it. Just keep moving left. Doesn't matter where I go. And then right. No, he's not going to hit me again. He actually did get a hit on me there because I waited too long. But that's basically the whole thing the whole time. Just move left. Move right. Hit. And that is, again, essentially what I think is the biggest problem with this game is that I ended up having absolutely no fear of the combat whatsoever. There is some resource management that would almost make it matter where you can occasionally like run out of ammo and, and you'll have to reconfigure in your inventory. But the one thing that you use most of the time is like a baton, uh, a melee weapon that never runs out, that you have to use all the time. So if every combat encounter is left, right, hit, left, right, hit, which for the majority of the time they are, the only variation later in the game is an enemy that spits at you. And then it does get to a certain point in the game where um, certain enemies will like grow tendrils out of their chests, basically. Um, actually, that happens to virtually every enemy, so even that doesn't have uh, much tension to it. I expected it to be some, but it makes you prioritize who you hit and what timing you hit them. Um, and you basically have to shoot the tendrils in the chest before you melee them. But because of that whole system, the way that it works, with limited uh, concerns even about being hit, um, some of the checkpoints are far apart, but for the most part, it's fine and you just dodge left, right, hit, and you get your health and you fill it up. There's just also no tension in combat. In fact, as I am walking through this game, the combat is the thing that I'm doing it for. I am trying to walk towards things that I'm going to kill. So in Dead Space, where you're terrified that something is going to kill you very quickly, or you're terrified of the way the enemies move, them jumping out of a dark place, jumping on you because you need to keep them as far away from you as possible, the Callisto Protocol does the opposite. And I get doing the opposite in terms of making sure it's not exactly like Dead Space. The issue is that the reason Dead Space did that was clearly to make sure that there is tension in the combat where this uh again right now if i can hear something i want to go okay where is it and how do i get towards it not where is it and how do i make sure i keep it away from me i am immediately like all right let me get towards you as fast as i possibly can dodge 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 hit and that again as scary as they might sound or as creepy as they might look or get later in the game 
just means that there is no fear or, again, that word tension in doing this whatsoever. The combat is definitely the biggest problem. And by the end of the game, I didn't, I didn't, again, I didn't mind doing the combat. I just saw it a lot more as something that was action orientated than as something that was supposed to be scary, which I don't think is the intent. There is another one here somewhere. Where is it? I can hear you, but I can't see you. And as I said, there's not a lot of enemy variety. There are um, robots which can kill you as soon as they see you and or will kill you as soon as they see you, but they are very, very easy to stealth around. And also the consequences for death just aren't that extreme. And there are some things in the game that like are creepy. Like that's pretty creepy. There's uh, this one section that has this, oh no, a series actually of, of traps. There are things that are creepy and things that look creepy. But again, it ends up being more like an action adventure with creepy sci-fi elements than anything um, that is actually horrific. Again, I'm just gonna walk towards you. I'm gonna go left, I'm gonna go right. I'm gonna hit you three times, left. And I think that's basically the core of it. Um, it's that we have a very linear game, which again, linear is okay. There are places for linear games. I often like linear games, but linear in every sense that it, it takes any decision-making out of things. Um, there are also effectively no puzzles. There are things that are akin to puzzles, but it's very, very, that's a very loose definition of puzzles. It's really just some navigation trickiness occasionally. Um, it's pretty uncommon. And even that means you don't actually have any decision making. So it's a very easy game to play without really having a sense of investment um, or again with that, a sense of tension. Again, that's kind of a cool thing in a sci-fi action game, but it doesn't make me afraid of it. And again, this is, it's creepy in theory. Um, this, someone's whispering my name. Uh, it just doesn't end up really having any consequential payoff for a player, I think. it It's basically an accumulation of things. The, the combat and the linearity and the narrative all tied together that just make it a really, really passive experience. And I think that in order for something to be scary, you have to have investment and decision making and you have to care about the characters even. It's not to say that all of the writing in any Resident Evil game is necessarily good. We've certainly had some blunders there, but they at least have characters that we end up really caring about, which I don't feel is the case for any of our characters here. Um, especially our protagonist, who basically doesn't exist. And Dead Space was similar to that. Obviously, Isaac used to not even talk, uh, and that was okay. <laughs> but at least I understood that he was extremely underpowered. And if I were Isaac Clarke opening this door... Again, because there's no tension in the scene, I don't care. The, the jump scares are the hardest thing for me to explain. It's really odd. I think the times that I jumped the most in this game was when a hologram appeared and I didn't expect it to for some reason. I don't know. I just kind of wanted to talk about this. Um, about why I think there's an accumulation of things that make this more of a sci-fi adventure than a horror game. But I would love to hear if anybody strongly disagrees with me. If you found this game super scary, again, I'm not saying I found it bad, I'm just saying I didn't find it scary, because those are two very different conversations. I would love to hear uh, what you found scary about it. Because as a scaredy cat, this hallway to me is just another hallway in this game that makes me go, I hope I get to fight something. Do you think there's any loot rather than um, any immediate threat, immediate tension, immediate consequence, despite it being a stunning looking video game with very, very good voice acting performances. And um, again, some of the best facial capture, some of the best lighting that I think I've ever seen in any game, really ever. It's just definitely an issue with when you can predict how almost every encounter is going to go or what's going to be behind almost every door. The tension is never really there, unfortunately. 